Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Zooming in on the topic of the covert narcissist. What are really the dynamics going on? How do they abuse? How do they serve to control and manipulate people in their environment? It's such a subtle uh, form of abuse. Sorry, I have something on my teeth there. It is such a subtle form of abuse, um, and it is so destructive, it is so hurtful to people. It can be crippling in nature. It can be devastating in nature. So we really want to explore and expound this so you can understand the inner workings of it so that you're not perpetually and, you know, uh, perpetually and repeatedly being abused by these types of people. So you can learn to identify it moving forward. Now, the covert narcissist has a very quiet veneer, a very sort of submissive veneer um, to their personality. A lot of people mistake it for the strong and silent type. Uh, the, you know, the uh, just the, the reserved, uh, the aloof, the very self-contained, the autonomous, the independent. Yet, um, there are people who are like this, very much so in life, who are, you know, maybe more introverted in nature. However, um, there is what exists a, a certain sort of destructive, harmful, and hurtful personality type, which creates a very imbalance um, in relationships. And I think this is one of the first indicators or trademarks that a covert narcissist will present in um, the psychological community is that there's a huge imbalance that is created in relationships with them, either in their family, their business, um, their their love relationships. They um, e experience a certain amount of you know lack of the ability to meet, uh, to relate to others, or form long-lasting, healthy relationships. So the covert narcissist, although outwardly quiet, outwardly demure, outwardly very shy, outwardly very buttoned up. Um, lurks within them a sort of uh, feeling that they are better than others and that to acknowledge the needs of others is a sign of weakness, um, it is a waste of time, it is not uh, worth their attention, not worthing their time, so they exhibit a quality what is basically called dismissive of the needs of others or denying basically the needs of others. Even though it would be very apparent, you know, that people would need acknowledgement or, um, you know, celebration on their birthdays or guidance in certain areas of their life or certain coming together um, in certain areas, finances, um, how we're going to decorate the house, you know, where we're going to travel, where is our relationship going to evolve to, you know, what, what do we both want here? The covert narcissist has such an, such an outward uh, shell and cloak of uh, submissiveness that there creates an imbalance in the relationship where one is essentially, you know, uh, keeping control and manipulate, manipulating others through this severe quietness. And um, I would say, you know, and I, I want to kind of get into not only this disregard, but I want to look at, you know, really kind of what's lurking underneath and this sort of vulnerability within. Because it's thought by psychologists that they, underneath, they really do not know because they maybe perhaps lack empathy, they, they perhaps lack understanding of the needs of others, that there's a true deficit that they do not how, know how to interact with others in a meaningful way. So they just basically just don't let it bother them. Just they, they choose to not participate. They just choose to not give. They choose to not be there. They choose to not communicate. They choose to not help. They choose to not direct. They choose to not congratulate. They choose to not spend quality time. Um, they choose to not mirror positive uh, reflection onto you. They choose to basically not, not be there, but yet they're, what's hurtful is that they are in a sort of relationship with people, either as a father, a boss, a spouse. So it's really, you know, the, the, um, the prevalence of the issues come up either from the narcissist themselves when either their spouse has complained, 
you know, or their, their kids are completely uh, rebellious, you know, problem makers, disrespecting this type of person because the covert will almost encourage this sort of abuse or uh, rage because they are so uh, submissive, they are so meek, they are so ineffective in their outward satisfying of others' needs that they create this sort of rebelliousness, anger, uh, disrespect within their relationship circles. So they're, they're you know, it, you know they, they create this sort of fear, guilt, and obligation in these people. So rather than it being a healthy, positive exchange, it becomes one of chaos, conflict, um, anger, hostility, confusion, uh, disappointment, sadness, depression, anxiety. So all the negative things which basically keep people stunted, keep people, you know, down and out and angry and not really fulfilling their destiny that the real issue you know where we really see a lot of hurt and damage done by this type of personality but meanwhile you know the covert narcissists they're you know sitting in their tower they're, they've got everything they need they have all the food shelter you know items that they need they're pursuing their interests but they're really kind of under their undergirding sense of Dis complete disregard for your needs is really what's injurious. So it's almost like, um, I call it, you know, abuse by omission, which is a very gentle way to put it. It's, it's, it's a true form of neglect. It's almost like they're starving somebody for attention. They're starving somebody for acknowledgement. So this deficit, it's, it's literally, you know, worse than like starving for food. They're starving for an emotional connection. They starve these people out. Basically, they're, 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 you know, they're creating a sort of emotional anorexia within these people. They're, they're causing them to fast emotionally. They're causing them to do without. You know, how can you function without the emotional component? Um, there's been, you know, different studies of, um, in psychology of, you know, uh, monkeys who were raised. And, and this can be seen in infants as well. Um, but that, um, you know, the monkeys who they could either, these baby monkeys, they could either go to um, a wire monkey. So imagine like a wire replication of a monkey, maybe made out of like hangers, like it's a wire monkey with food pellets in it. Or there was a soft, furry, cushy, you know, uh, teary cloth sort of monkey without food. And the baby monkeys would go to the teary cloth soft, you know, plush um, monkey and starve themselves rather than going to the hard, cold monkey with food. I mean, the need for att attention, the need for emotional warmth is so great that, you know, the monkeys would starve themselves. And likewise, there's a study that um, uh, nuns uh, completed in, um, in a uh, orphanage, um, you know, for uh, babies who had been uh, abused or uh, you know, given up, and um, they did a study of, you know, these infants in cribs, and literally those who were fed, you know, I think they had a study and a control study, there were, you know, infants who were fed and not held, and then infants who were fed and held, and the infants who were fed only, not held, basically began to lose body mass, uh, because they were not fed that affection, they were not fed that, that nurturing, they were not fed that you know human touch which is essential for human growth so there's so much in those two studies so the covert narcissist abuses in essentially these types of manners and it creates the deficit uh, creates the control and manipulation and then the feeling of insuperiority fear and guilt within their victims peace and harmony with you here today i hope these videos help Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.